Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you're interested in today's video. For many years, mainland China has been the world's largest chip market. Statistics show that 70% of the world's chips pass through mainland China, as it is the global electronics manufacturing center and inevitably consumes the majority of the world's chips. Of course, this was also due to China's limited chip manufacturing capabilities, necessitating the import of so many chips from abroad. However, this situation has been radically changed by U.S. chip restrictions, and now statistics are out, showing that mainland China's chip production has once again set a record. Recently, China's statistical authorities released data on domestic chip production from January to August of this year. In August, a total of 42.5 billion chips were produced, a year-on-year -year increase of 3.2%. The cumulative production for the first eight months reached 342.91 billion chips, an increase of 8.8% year-on-year. Calculated on a daily basis, approximately 1.429 billion chips were produced per day in the first eight months, setting another new record. This is not surprising, as several major domestic wafer fabs have recently stated that their production capacity is fully utilized. For example, SMIC, the largest wafer fab in mainland China, has continued to grow its revenue, surpassing both UMC and Global Foundries for consecutive years firmly securing its position as the world's third-largest wafer fab. Mainland China's continued growth in chip production capacity is due to the accelerated expansion of wafer fabs in recent years. According to public data, mainland China leads the world in the number of wafer fabs expanded and planned in recent years. This situation is entirely the result of U.S. imposed chip restrictions. China had already begun developing its chip industry long before then, but due to the prevailing mentality of buying is worse than making, the domestic semiconductor industry had been relatively slow to develop. In recent years, however, the U.S. disrupted this situation by unilaterally launching a chip war and restricting the development of China's chip industry. A key target was Huawei, a Chinese private enterprise. The U.S. imposed multiple rounds of stringent sanctions, not only restricting the export of high-end chips to Huawei but also forcing TSMC to stop manufacturing Kirin chips with the goal of leaving Huawei without chips. Under the sanctions of a superpower, Huawei naturally faced a chip shortage. After all, China had previously placed too much faith in the global division of labor, not only purchasing large quantities of chips from abroad but also relying on external companies for chip manufacturing. After all, only TSMC and Samsung possess advanced process chip manufacturing technology, leaving mainland China's wafer fabs far behind. After targeting Huawei, the U.S. subsequently added mainland semiconductor-related companies such as SMIC, Shanghai Microelectronics, and Yangtze Memory Technologies to the entity list and began restricting the export of advanced equipment and other materials to China, targeting the entire domestic semiconductor industry. This series of U.S. actions made China fully aware of the need for chip independence, prompting a rapid surge in chip construction and accelerated wafer fab expansion in mainland China. Of course, due to U.S. restrictions, 
this primarily focus on mature process FAPs. This also address a key issue for mainland China's chips, as 75% of current market demand is for mature process chips. Another noteworthy piece of data is the continued growth of mainland China's chip exports. According to customs statistics, from January to August this year, total chip exports reached 233 billion units, a year-on-year -year increase of 20.8%, and the value of chip exports reached 17.722 billion US dollars a year-on-year -year increase of 22.1%, setting a new record compared to previous figures. Cheap production data indicates that China's cheap production capacity is rapidly increasing, while cheap export data also indicates that China's cheap exports are also growing rapidly. Consequently, the growth of mainland China's cheap exports is beginning to flow into overseas markets, and American companies are the most affected. While the United States has gradually fallen behind in cheap manufacturing, with its share of global cheap production capacity declining from 37% to less than 12% today, it remains a significant leader in cheap design, as its cheap exports consistently account for approximately half of the world's total. As Chinese chips are flowing overseas, American chips are naturally the first to be affected, as their price-performance ratio cannot compare to that of China. In response, the U.S. Department of Commerce also released a report stating that approximately 70% of the mature process chips used domestically, i.e., chips with a process size of 28 nanometers and above, come from mainland China, prompting the U.S. to begin focusing on this issue. This led to the U.S. and Europe jointly investigating mature process chips hoping to address this issue, fearing future reliance on China for mature processes. However, some foreign media commented that the U.S. is unable to prevent this, as mature processes are already unstoppable. In recent years, mainland China has made significant efforts across the entire semiconductor industry chain achieving domestic production of mature process equipment and materials. However, China must also clearly recognize that it still has significant lags in cheap production and needs to continue its efforts to achieve a breakthrough.